Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory and this is Would You Make It? In this video I'm doing a collaboration with Stoic Forge. Stoic Forge is a blacksmith that is known primarily for making rings but they can really make pretty much anything you want. So Brandon from Stoic Forge has made this pretty cool looking camping knife and my task is going to be to make the wooden handle. So let's get started. So I've added some black electrical tape to the blade for added safety because I'm going to be drilling through these holes and if the drill bit were to catch on the hole while it's spinning, the whole blade could spin and lop off a finger or two. If you're not familiar with the terminology for the parts of the knife, this part right here that extends up through the handle is called the tang and this board underneath is zebra wood that I'm going to use to make the scales. The scales are the pieces of the wood that get attached to the outer surface and then I will sand it to shape it and give it a nice finish. So one issue with the tang as it currently stands is it's not entirely flat. If you can see that from the end you can see that it's a little bit thinner on the edges compared to the middle so it's a little bit thicker in the middle and if I measure that you'll see that on the edge let's see on the edge it's about 0.17 and in the middle, it's about 0.2 inches. I used my disc sander to sand down the tang. It was fairly easy, actually. It only took about two minutes, maybe two or three minutes per side. The metal got pretty hot halfway through, so when I finished one side, I let it cool down, and then I flipped it over and did the other side. Now I'm marking the length of the scales, and then I will cut that piece on the table saw. And then over at the bandsaw, I just eyeballed it to split the piece of zebra wood down the middle. And I think it came pretty close. After that, I ran them through the drum sander. If you don't have a drum sander, there's lots of different ways to sand down the wood to make it flat. After sanding the tang with the disc sander, it made a little bit of a curve in the steel near the blade. So I had to adjust the pieces of wood so that they will fit closely inside the curve. Now that I've got the scales made, I could just proceed to glue them onto the tang and then uh, sand it flush to the edge of the tang. The problem with that is that wood tends to expand and contract with changes in humidity. So if I did that, if I sanded it flush with the tang, then it wouldn't remain flush as the wood expands and contracts. So the way around that is I can stabilize the wood first. The way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to put the two scales into a vacuum chamber and then I'm going to use this stabilizing resin and I'm going to mix it with a catalyst. So this catalyst I need to shake it up and according to the instructions I would, uh, I would mix the entire amount of catalyst with the stabilizing resin. The issue with that is once you do that it only has a shelf life of 6 to 12 months which is still pretty a good amount of time but I'm not sure when I'm going to use this again whereas the uh, the unmixed stabilizing resin has a shelf life of about three years. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out half of this, then I'll mix only half of it. That way I can use more of it later when I really need it. So now I'm going to pour it in over top of the scales. And I want to put about a, a half an inch more than I need because this is going to absorb into the wood. And then I have this barrier that I'm going to put down over top of that so that the scales don't float up outside 
of the resin and then I'm going to turn this screw to lock it into place. Okay, so that's in place. Next, I'm going to put this piece of glass on top. Now, some of the vacuum chambers that are on the market are clear all the way up uh, the side, so you can see what's going on inside. This one I can only see through the top. It's imp very important to be able to see inside because when I initiate the vacuum, there's a lot of air trapped in the wood. That air is going to come out and it's going to create, it's going to form bubbles uh, from the stabilizing resin. So I'm going to turn it on carefully. Make sure the bubbles don't come up because the last thing you want is for the bubbles to be sucked into the vacuum. And you can see the bubbles starting to form. It's actually not bubbling up as much as I thought, so that's good. At this point, there are just a few small bubbles still being evacuated out of the wood. So I'll leave this running for about an hour and then the wood should be fully evacuated of the air and the resin should be absorbed into the wood. Then I'll come back, shut it off, and then I'll let it sit overnight so that the resin can fully soak in. While the tanks are soaking in the resin, I'm going to drill the holes in the tank. Brandon had already drilled them to be 9 64 of an inch, and I need them to be 3 16 of an inch. So I'm going uh, one drill bit size at a time to ease into the holes. and then I test it with the pin. The pin actually fits quite tightly, but that's what I want. I'll be able to hammer it in when we're ready. All right, it's the next morning and the scales have been resting in the stabilizing resin overnight. So now it's time to take them out. So I just lift off the top. I've got a jar that I will use to empty out the contents. And then I'll just detach the hold down plate and there are the two scales. So when the curing of the resin is activated by heat, so I'm gonna put them in a toaster oven for about an hour at 200 degrees, and that will cure the resin and harden it, and then the scales will be ready to work with. So what I'm going to do is wrap the scale in foil just to keep the resin contained. I'll put the other piece beside it, wrap it up, and then it's ready to go in the oven. I'll set it at 200 degrees and turn it on. And then I'll just let that sit for about an hour. All right, so there are the two stabilized pieces of wood. Now I'm just gonna sand them down a little bit and they'll be ready to attach. Now I'm using double-sided sticky tape to temporarily attach the scales to the tang. Um, I wanna make sure that they don't move while I'm drilling through them. So that's why the tape is important. Now I have a 3 16 inch brass rod that I'm going to cut up into pieces that are about an inch and a half long and these will be the pins that insert into the handle. I'm rounding over the ends of the pins to make them easy to insert into the tang. And now we're ready for the epoxy. I'm using a five minute epoxy here so I need to move fairly quickly. I'm going to put an ample layer on each side of the tang and then I will attach the scales and then insert the pin. And then I will clamp it tightly and let it sit for a couple of hours. The epoxy is strong enough to hold the scales onto the tang, but it's not strong enough to oppose any kind of a shear force if the knife were to be dropped. So the epoxy works kind of like a magnetic force between two magnets. It's really hard to pull them apart, 
but it's really easy to slide them apart. So that's where the pins come into play. They help to oppose that shear force. The brass is soft enough that I can use the bandsaw to trim off the ends. I do the first bit of sanding with the disc sander and the belt sander, and then I head over to the oscillating spindle sander to finish up. The spindle sander enables me to get a nice clean edge that is flush along the edge of the tang. And then I do a little bit of hand sanding to round over the edges. And I start with 80 grit and work all the way up to 320 grit. And then I just rub on a little bit of mineral oil as a finish. The blade on this knife has a concave blade, so it's not that easy to sharpen with a regular flat uh, sharpening stone. So I got our knife sharpener out of the kitchen and that will work perfectly for this type of a blade. The end of the blade has a convex shape on it, so it's easier to sharpen with a flat stone. You just have to turn as you're sharpening, as you're pushing the blade across the stone. I'm starting with a coarse diamond stone, and then I progress through a fine and super fine, or very fine. Following the diamond stones, I just received a, a sharpening stone from Tack Life, so I'm giving it a try for the first time. It has 3,000 grit on one side, and then you flip it over and it has 8,000 grit on the other side. It's a pretty economical stone and a good value. Now that the knife is sharpened, we'll test it out. So it cut through the paper pretty easily. Brandon from Stoic Forge did a great job on the blade. If you want to learn more about Stoic Forge, check out the link in the description. And I gotta ask, would you make it?